Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing the good news for all this Christmas. Who doesn't love good news? Especially the kind that comes when we have gone through so many challenges and problems that have left us feeling discouraged or drained. For so many reasons, it is in the middle of such despondent moments that glad tidings are really appreciated. Here is how the Bible puts it in Proverbs 25, 25. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Proverbs 15, 30. Light in a messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. God also brought us joy-filled news right in the face of our troubling questions, pain and confusion with the birth of our Savior. This Savior's arrival signaled glad tidings of great joy to all humanity, and His name is Jesus. Just like in various nations when a king or president is about to visit any location, His arrival is announced, and His coming is heralded with celebrations, so it was with the birth of Jesus. It was announced with great glory while the angel spoke of this great joy that humanity had now received. After all, this was going to be a never-before-seen kind of king who was fully human, yet God. Luke 2, 1-21 In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. The book of Mark also starts by describing the great news about this unique man. Mark 1, 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message, After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whom sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
Who is this amazing person that even thousands of years before the angels appeared and spoke to the shepherds, the good news of his birth was announced? Isaiah 40, 6-11 A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends to his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. The beautiful thing about Jesus, who is the ultimate good news himself, is that he doesn't just come into our lives to take up space. He literally comes and steps in with the good news of God's kingdom living in us. Luke 4, 42-44 At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also because that is why I was sent, and he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. His purpose was to literally bring the good news that man would no more be far from God, but at peace with his Maker. Mark 1, 14-15 After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. He is the greatest news that also bears such great news to you and I. Matthew 4, 23-25 Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demonic possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decropolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Matthew 11, 2-5 When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. This is also affirmed way back in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 61 The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. 
their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. A delight greatly in the Lord, my soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and garden, causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Now, isn't it a great privilege that the Father has also bestowed on you and I the assignment of announcing this good news of the King that is born to save and rescue every single person from sin and its curse? Nahum 1, 15 Look, there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, Judah, and fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. Isaiah 52, 6-10 Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore in that day they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Listen. Your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. It's time to go and tell this good news to everywhere, the news that the king is born. No more will mankind live in bondage when they desire freedom. This king will be right there to bring victory. Bless God, he is the reason for the season. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the great news that the birth of Jesus has heralded. Thank you for providing an atonement for the yoke of sin through my Savior. In the name of Jesus, as I celebrate this season, let me never forget the good news that his birth brought into the world and into my life.